Engineering Centre for Doctoral Training is primarily housed in the Nanoscience and Quantum Information Building, located in the University's Clifton campus. Sandwiched between the historical H.H. H. Wells Physics Laboratory and the Modern Life Sciences Building, the NSQI on its opening in September 2009 took on the mantle of being the quietest building in the world in terms of vibration and acoustic noise. Beside this, there are one or two distinctive architectural features of note, including the curved Portuguese limestone on the main elevation as set out in the Fibonacci series, a sequence of numbers first created by Italian mathematician Leonardo Fibonacci in 1202. The atrium dome is shaped like a buckyball, a molecular structure resembling a football composed entirely of carbon atoms that has the most astonishing properties. It was named after Richard Buckminster, or Bucky Fuller. The exclusive CDT student office, located on the first floor, is at the heart of the day-to-day -day activity for our students. Every year, our cohort-based learning approach allows the students to create a strong bond with which experience tells us last through their PhD phase and beyond. Being part of the CBT cohort has been great. It's unlike any other experience I've had throughout academia, where you're always working together, be it in the lab or in the office. Everyone comes to the CBT with a different amount of experience in different areas, and what you'll find is people tackle different problems with different viewpoints. This can be incredibly valuable because some people will have gaps in their knowledge in which other people can help them with and vice versa. The office is overall a great space to work, especially throughout the pandemic. It means we have plenty of face-to-face -face discussions, be that through regular reading groups, working out problems on the whiteboard, or just planning lab work. Being part of a cohort is great because you end up learning from your cohort members and everyone has a different set of skills. And because we all have these different skills, we can actually work together and create something that we definitely couldn't have done individually. The foyer area is normally a bustling hub for the students and the wider quantum engineering technology labs community. The building community is a very welcoming place and it's often fed back to us how easy it is for new starters to feel integrated. Located just off the foyer area is the main teaching space for the CDT, the NSQI Seminar Room. With modern facilities, it is a collaboration space in which our students feel at ease for their learning. Teaching and meetings will often occur upstairs in the student office. The CDT owns its very own lab over in the heart of the H.H. H. Wells Physics Laboratory. It was set up with modern optical tables by the first cohort of students a number of years ago. It has a mezzanine level with desks and computers to encourage group working and you'll be given access from the week you arrive. An optics lab can seem like a daunting place for members of the cohort who may not come from an experimental background, but we feel it's an essential part of the journey for a quantum engineer. I enjoyed being in the lab a lot more than I expected to, actually having come from a lot more theoretical background. Everyone is encouraged to work both on the applied and the theoretical sides of the problem. You end up doing a three month project in both probably working hands on or something, like maybe designing a chip, but then also doing something more theoretical, which might involve computer simulation or even doing some pen and paper maths. As part of the programme, the cohort is put into two teams which are grouped with a balance of background in mind. So even if you don't have experimental experience, it is likely some members of your team will. In your teams, you'll be mentored by members of a previous cohort to achieve, over the course of the first teaching block, the full design, literature review and implementation of a well-known quantum interference experiment. One month into CDT and you're there in the lab of quantum optics and you have all those equipments in front of you that you have just read about and your mentors will just tell you what you need to do and then there you are with your team on you know your own self and playing with those equipments is just so much fun it is so thrilling to get your hands on the lab so soon and you know seeing how things work in these two months i have learned the most of my life 
because from day one into the lab to now, I feel it was an exponential leap of learning. And I'm so happy to be here. My cohort mates and everybody around is so supportive. In a normal year with no pandemic restrictions on lab occupancy, both teams would work alongside each other in the CDT lab. We've branched out this year into a second photonics lab located in the Queen's building to allow our teams as much time as possible in the labs. Given you this exposure to experimental work early on, running alongside the more theoretical units allows you to make the most informed choice possible when it comes to choosing your two, three month long projects during the first year. As part of their first year of training, our students do two, three month long research projects. These begin around February and June each year. The projects can be on any research topic in the broad realm of quantum engineering. So these can be theory projects, experimental projects, ranging from nanofabrication in the lab all the way to designing and exploring quantum algorithms. And we welcome project proposals from industry and academia alike, whether you're uh, in Bristol University or elsewhere. Something that I really liked about the CDT was the idea of being able to get a breadth of studying in first year. You're not tied to a research project when you start. First year really brings everyone up to scratch. One of the optional units in the CDT is nanofabrication for quantum engineering, where you get to learn about all the building blocks that make integrated photonics possible. One of the best things about the units was that we got to go and apply the stuff we learned in the actual clean room. So we built some superconducting thin films and we got to characterise them using surface profilometry and ellipse which determined the thickness of the films. The clean rooms in Bristol are world class and it was amazing to be able to learn how to use this equipment immediately after joining the Quantum Engineering CDT. Overall I would say the CDT cohort experience is one of the biggest selling points and it allows you to build up this very useful network of friends through which you can call upon throughout your PhD and rely upon. It has made me realise how interesting and exciting the opportunities in quantum technologies are. If you're interested in this interdisciplinary approach to a really interesting subject where you're bringing in the physics, the maths, the computer science, the engineering. I would recommend this programme to anyone interested in quantum technology. It gives you a great opportunity to learn so much. So, I'm so happy!